won't you stay a while and listen? Now, this story that I'm about to tell you is perhaps one of the most well-known. Some historians claim that this is one of the one of the oldest Norse tales. Others claim that this was an attempt by Christianity to humiliate and ridicule the Norse faith. Regardless of which one of those is true, there is no doubt that it was immensely popular. So, I'm going to tell you this story. Once upon a time, Thor had been out traveling, and the story doesn't say what he was up to, but it was something that made him really, really tired. So he laid down to rest in the middle of this big, empty, green field. He parked his cart, fed his goats, then laid down and took a nap. Several hours later, he woke up, and he realized immediately that something was amiss. Something was wrong. He quickly looked around himself, and he discovered that his hammer was missing. Mjolnir was gone. This was a disaster. He tore at his hair, he ripped at his beard, and he bellowed across the lands. He realized quickly, though, that he needed help. So he gathered his goats, got into his cart, and flew back to Osgor. There he gathered the gods and informed them that his hammer was missing. This was, of course, an unmitigated disaster. The hammer of Thor, Mjölnir, is such an immensely powerful weapon. With a single blow, it can flatten mountains. When he threw it away, it always returned to his hand. And then, of course, it could also shoot lightning. And in the hands of someone less restrained than Thor, if such a thing is even possible, it could spell tragedy for both gods and humans alike. So they convened in a council, and Thor asked Loki for his help. Please, Loki, help me find my missing hammer. Loki, of course, replied, well, of course, Thor, I will gladly help you to find your tool. So Loki went to Freya, and he asked to borrow her um, falcon suit so he could fly across the land and search for Thor's missing hammer. Freya gladly borrowed Loki her falcon suit. Loki got dressed up, turned into a falcon, and then started to fly across the realms. He searched far and wide, and eventually he entered into a realm which we call Jotunheim, the home of trolls and giants. Eventually, he found the home of a giant named Trim. And Loki asked him, point blank, do you know what has happened to Thor's hammer? And Trim responded, <laughs> Well, of course I know what happened to Thor's hammer. I stole it. And he will never get it back. I have hidden it beneath the earth, eight miles deep. Trim was beside himself with joy. 
Loki, however, was horrified. The hammer of Thor, merely in the hands of someone as nasty as Tyrion? So Loki asked him, Dear, dear Tyrion, whatever can we do to make you give up the hammer and give it back to Thor where it belongs? Only one thing will do, answered Tyrion. In return for the hammer of Thor, I demand the hand of Freya in marriage. Loki swallowed heavily, flew back, and gathered the gods once again for a council. And there he relayed the demand of Trim. Thor, of course, immediately got up, grabbed Freya round the arm, and said, Come, woman, let us get you a bridal dress. Freya wouldn't have anything to do with that. She ripped her arm back and said, My hand in matrimony is only mine to give away. I will not marry Trim, not even for your hammer. But, but how will I get my hammer back? said Thor. At this point, Heimdall, another one of the Norse gods, one of the wiser ones had an idea and his idea was that if you are so eager for to get your hammer back i suggest that you dress up in a wedding gown and you marry Tim. what i will not thor in a wedding dress are you out of your mind? It is the only thing to do. Freya will not marry him. You won't want your hammer back. Do you have another suggestion? Well, I for one, said Loki, think it's a marvelous idea and I wholeheartedly su support it. Let us get you a wedding gown, Thor. It will be legendary. And so, Thor was actually convinced. They made a wedding dress to fit him, and it fell across his very broad shoulders, down his very flat chest, his narrow hips, and he didn't look that very let's say, shapely. So they realized they had to do something about this. Loki giggled and giggled. So he went and took Thor down to the beach. And there they found two rocks of similar sizes. I, I, I'll call them buxom rocks put them in sacks, and then tied them across Thor's chest in order to, you know, give the illusion of um, potential motherhood. On his hips, they tied one a water skin on each side in order to simulate birth giving abilities yeah and then they put a wedding dress on him and of course they had to fool Trim into believing that this was Freya so they borrowed Freya's necklace breathing a gun and put down that around Thor's neck and across his head they put a veil so they couldn't see his face or his beard because he refused to shave off his beard, which I quite understand. So all the preparations were done. They got into Thor's cart and then they flew to Trim. Into Jotunheim and they went. Trim had heard of their 
imminent arrival, and he gathered his flock, his hidden of crows and giants. For now was the day of his wedding and the feast that was to follow, and all manner of despicable, hideous creatures gathered in the halls of Trim. They slaughtered cattle, they roasted pigs, they fished salmon, and they pulled out barrels and barrels of mead and beer for the feast. As far as a giant's wedding goes, it was actually quite lovely. It, it was apparent that Trim had made a lot of uh, effort into this. Now, Thor, before they left, he realized that, but Loki, I can't have you coming as Loki. You will have to dress up and be my bridesmaid. Well, if you insist, Thor, weirdly enough, it didn't actually take any convincing at all to make Loki dress up in a bridesmaid dress. He put it on, he did his makeup expertly, flaunted his girlish hips and his swaggering step, and fooled everybody. He seemed way too comfortable in this dress of his. Eventually, they arrived at Tim's hall. They were ushered inside and given a place of honor at the honor's table. Thor, in the the skies of Freya was seated next to Trim, the groom. Loki was given a place right next to them. And as usual, following such a wedding, is that they start feasting. So they brought out roasted oxen, freshly caught salmons, barrels of mead and beer, and Thor, being Thor, actually managed to eat a whole roasted oxen by himself, several wild salmons, and then he drank three barrels of beer. Trim was horrified. Oh, 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 how he turned to Loki, which he thought was the bridesmaid, and he said, How can she eat so much? I thought Freya was a, was a dainty, feminine sort. How can she eat a whole ox and sell several salmons and drink so much beer? Loki thought fast, and he said, Oh, but you see, my dear Trim, Freya hasn't eaten for eight whole days and nights. She has been so nervous and excited about finally getting married. Trim bought this. So he settled back and started to enjoy the feast. But eventually, though, his uh, manners left him, which they usually do when it comes to trolls and giants. And he thought he would sneak a quick kiss before the wedding was officially done. So he leaned over, started to pull down the veil across Thor's face, and the first thing he saw was Thor's eyes. Such angry, rage-filled red eyes was staring back at Trim, and he was horrified, he was shocked at the sight that met him. He turned to Loki, the bridesmaid, and she and he asked him, Bridesmaid, how the eyes on Freya, what is this? Why does she look so, so distraught and angry? Oh, 
don't you worry, dear Tyrion. She, because you see, Freya, she hasn't slept in eight whole days and night because she's been so excited to finally get to marry you. And you know how sleep, what it does when you don't get enough of it, what it does to a woman on this, the night of her wedding night. Trim bought this as well. Eventually, it came the ceremony of gift giving, which is a very, very important thing in Norse weddings. And the very first thing that was brought out was, of course, the gift for the bride, Mjölnir. Five giants were required to carry the hammer down the length of the hall and gently place it in the lap of who they thought was Freya. When Thor got the hammer in his lap, a couple of silent seconds passed by. Thor reached out a gentle ginger hand, grabbed a hold of the hammer, tore his veil off, and roared! He immediately smashed the head of Trim to a pulp. He fell down dead. And he started slaughtering all of the attendants. Every troll and giant and despicable creature in this wedding feast was horrifically killed by Thor. And his blood rage and joy and happiness of finally having his hammer back. The only one spared was Loki. Thor, during this, and let's call it what it is, slaughter, had of course removed his wedding dress, gotten into his old clothes again, caressed his hammer, hanged it on his belt, and then he grabbed Loki and they started to fly home. Something tells me that Loki didn't actually put off the bridesmaid's dress until he got home, though. Now, this is the story about when Thor and Loki dressed up in drag. And it's a quite a funny story. And you'll and before I say goodbye, I leave you with some minor tidbits about this story. Now, it's very, very old, and it's actually written in the form of a poem. Now, what I've told you right now is my version of the story. It does touch upon all of the beats in the original poem. And one thing that is eerily familiar, if you've ever come across a fairy tale, one particular fairy tale, about a little girl in a red riding hood and the big bad wolf. Oh my, what big eyes you have, Grandma. Now the people that actually research fairy tales and folklore is quite convinced that the story of Little Red Riding Hood is inspired by the poem of Trimskvida, which is the story I just told you. Thank you for listening.